a joint letter before Monday's lifting of social contact regulations in England, 40 leading charities warned that the government's determination to press ahead with the reopening means that for those most vulnerable to COVID, it will be a day when freedoms are taken away. Well, one of those people who signed the letter is Laura Kirby, and she's the CEO of Myeloma UK. Laura, thanks a lot for joining us on GB News. We really do appreciate it. Many people are, of course, extremely happy about so-called Freedom Day. So tell us the point of view of some of those who are more concerned. So myeloma patients have gone through a very difficult time, uh, having started with shielding, having postponement of treatments, having changes to treatment protocols, and they have had to deal with the fear and confusion at a level of uh, despair that perhaps many of us haven't had to go through. And so therefore the lifting of restrictions for many of them who are elderly and vulnerable and have suppressed immune systems uh, is incredibly uh, fear, fear, concerning. In fact, our cohorts, our community are very frightened, not only patients, but the household, if they've got children or spouses or partners, uh, then they're very worried about what is happening uh, with the lifting of COVID restrictions. Now we absolutely understand that people want Freedom Day and it's not a matter of the, the open letter was really urging the public uh, as an awareness campaign to enjoy their freedoms, but think about three things. Keep wearing masks in crowded places. You, you don't know if you're sat next to somebody who's going to a chemotherapy session on a bus or on a train. You can have no idea who's around you. So please wear masks when you're in confined or overcrowded spaces. Secondly, please keep distance from people that you just simply don't know. Um, you know, I, I, myself, sometimes I've been looking at people wondering, um, but you really don't know who's vulnerable. And so keeping distance is really critical. And then lastly, we're advocating uh, vaccination, particularly for those with suppressed immune, uh, compromised uh, immune systems. Uh, whilst we don't know exactly the protection that vaccine gives, we know it gives some protection. And therefore, we're very keen that people do make sure they go and have their double doses. We're hoping the general public can make those uh, decisions on the basis that government, we have to accept now that government is lifting restrictions in England, uh, more cautiously in other nations. Uh, we really hope that appealing to the general public's goodwill and nature will be the best way we can now protect clinically vulnerable uh, patients, uh, particularly myeloma patients for me. Are people who are clinically vulnerable, sort of what, what percentage of them are employers making go to, to work, I suppose? Is that a big issue in, in your job at the moment? I mean, I think, you know, most people will agree that you are making a sensible point. It was really interesting that your appeal was to the public. You weren't writing to the government. You were, you were writing to all of us to ask us to be considerate. But are employers supporting those people whose immune system may be uh, compromised and the vaccine is not as effective uh, as the rest of us? Or actually, some of them are key workers. They might be there, you know, just outline the picture for us. So I, I think uh, in terms of getting back to work, uh, clearly, again, across the nations, there's been different calls. So in Scotland, I think you were talking about Scotland earlier, you know, they're not rushing back to uh, working, no longer working from home and getting back to the office. And it does look like individual businesses are being given the responsibility to determine what is best for uh, their employees. And that will be a very, very mix dependent on their policies. But government is certainly pushing that in the responsibility of employers who have difficult choices to make. What we do at Myeloma UK is make sure that we support patients so, and their households. So if they have concerns, then we try and ensure that we can enable them to have the right conversation with their employer to try and get that support. But I think one of the things you say we didn't write to government, we did write to government prior to having to accept that restrictions were going to be lifted. And one of the things that we really wanted to push on was financial support for people with cancer. Uh, so that they do have choices. And this is about choice. Uh, it's, you know, so it's lovely, it's Freedom Day, and that's wonderful, but not everybody has the same choice, and it's about recognising that and providing for that. Laura Kirby, thanks a lot for joining us. Laura Kirby there of Myeloma UK, of course, myeloma being a form of bone marrow cancer. And let's move on now.